Now, you have an innate intelligence. Innate means inborn intelligence. Now, we can use other words for that. We can use your soul, your spirit, uh, your inner self, your conscious. You can do a lot of different things and use for that term. What you don't realize, and I only realized only just a few years ago, some writings have come out to show that chiropractic we know was founded and discovered by D.D. Palmer in 1895. But what we didn't know was D.D. Palmer was a spiritualist. As a matter of fact, he put in his writings that he learned how to do what he did in the chiropractic adjustment. The first one he did was on a guy named Harvey Lillard, a black, um, a black janitor that hadn't been able to hear for three years. He adjusted him and his hearing came back. Didn't have a backache, didn't have a neck ache. He couldn't hear. His second, by the way, his second patient had heart trouble. It was a long time before it got into where it was back problems. So the way that he adjusted this Harvey Lillard he learned from a man who had died 50 years earlier that he had never met. So Harvey Lillard, Harvey Lillard uh, talked with dead people, you know, so to speak. His son, uh, which was the chiropractic developer, B.J. Palmer, uh, he went into laboratory with all these spines, and in his writings he says, he was about 18 years old at the time, he said, I went in there and spent 16 to 18 hours a day, and it was something like six weeks or whatever. He did this day in and day out, and they told him what their problems were and what it takes to be well. So chiropractic was built on this type of premise, and D.D. wanted to make chiropractic a religion. And the reason he wanted to do that is then they couldn't come in and say you were practicing medicine without a license because a lot of chiropractors went to jail for practicing medicine without a license. So that's a little of the history you don't understand, and that's why this chart has come about. Now, B.J. Palmer, once he came out of that room with all those uh, spines, from that point on, he never talked to himself as a single person. He would say, we are going to town. Well, who's we? Innate and I because he knew that his innate was a primary thing. So you have your innate mind, which is the one that you have your intuition and you know what to do and you, you kind of guide through and you have all these things telling you. And then you have your educated mind. Educated mind is what you read the book and you know it. And so many times the educated mind gets in our way. Well, I, I, I study this out and I think this is where I ought to go. But boy, my gut says I ought to go over here. Well, but I studied the book, and this is the way I'm going. Have you ever done that? How many's done that? You know? And then you say, man, I should have listened to my instinct. That's the innate. That's the spirit. That's the energy within you. Now, the scriptures tell us that we are made in the image of God. Now, does that mean that God has flesh and bones? The time here on earth is so short, and the flesh and bones are nothing. What happens if I die this instance, what happens? Nothing. The temperature's the same, the blood's the same, you know, all this except, besides the heart stops beating, there's no energy within the body. The energy steps over here and it's right here. And that's the only difference. So really what I am is an energy being inside of flesh and bones. So if I am in the image of God, that means that God is energy also.